Thanks to GEICO for sponsoring today's episode, where we are bundling a taco with a hot dog. With GEICO, you could save even more when you bundle your home and car insurance. Uh, at least Mr. Fish owner gave us foot-long taco dogs. Yep, this thing's filling a foot-long hole in my heart. Even though these are the 10-inch long rejects. Ugh, I blew it. No three-quarters wonka. Not even a wee wonk. Louise, in your sort of selfish, sort of thoughtful, mostly selfish way, you did a really good thing today. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the foot-long taco dog with cheese chunk dipping sauce from Bob's Burgers. Now, for the Babish version, I wanted to make an actual foot-long taco, so I needed some foot-wide tortillas, which are harder to come by than you think. As such, I sourced these from America's most popular burrito chain, which, as usual, was an awkward transaction. More on that later, because first we have to make our Wonder Wharf accurate version, which, if the quality of the rest of its attractions are any indication, it's likely little more than a steam table dog loaded up with industrial-grade shelf-stable chili sauce and an upsettingly named cheese chunk dipping sauce, both likely pumped from 50 gallon drums. And since it's just a junk food mishmash, it's not like terrible, but it's definitely not good. For a sugar addled preteen, it's just about right. But as per this show's prime directive, I think we can do a whole lot better. We're gonna start, of course, by making our very own hot dogs. I've done this before, so I'm gonna kind of breeze through it. I'm cubing up one kilogram of brisket and chuck into about half inch or meat grinder friendly cubes. On top of that, we're doing the same with 150 grams of beef fat. Placing all them's out on a parchment lined baking sheet, pop in the freezer for 15 to 20 minutes or until starting to turn hard around the edges. Press through a thoroughly chilled meat grinder with its largest plate, producing a pebbly, fatty ground beef that would work great for a burger. However, we're going to resist the temptation to turn these into a burger and pass them once again through the meat grinder, this time with the smallest plate, turning our beautiful ground beef into a sort of ground beef paste. Go ahead and set that aside while we prepare our spice mixture. 23 grams of fine sea salt, 10 grams of paprika, 5 grams garlic powder, 4 grams white pepper, 4 grams onion powder, and 1.5 grams pink curing salt. Tiny whisk until homogenous and add it to the double ground beef. Agitate this mixture around every which way until it's evenly combined, and if you thought that we couldn't grind this meat any further, well, buckle up. Because in two even batches, we're placing this beef into a food processor and streaming in 230 grams of ice water, that's 115 grams per batch, while the machine runs. The ice water is going to emulsify together with the meat mixture to create a really pasty paste called a farce, which I think is needlessly deprecating, but once all of our meat has been converted into a thick, pasty, sloppy farce, we're going to let it cure overnight in the fridge in an airtight container with a layer of plastic wrap pressed directly down against the farce. We want to prevent oxidation because, sadly enough, nobody likes a gray hot dog. The next day, we are stuffing our hot dogs into hot dog casings, a process for which I both have known disdain and very little knowledge. So if you want to see how to stuff hot dogs, go ahead and check out a YouTuber that knows what they're doing. My best efforts yielded four gargantuan dogs and one mini dog, which I'm going to prick repeatedly, preventing air bubbles from forming and preventing the casings from splitting during their 45 minutes on a smoker held at 175 degrees Fahrenheit until the dogs register 150 degrees at their thickest point. Now you can keep these guys in the fridge until you're ready to steam, grill, or griddle. Now as cute as the foot-long hot dog looks sticking out of the little tiny taco shell, I want a slightly more practical foot-long taco dog experience. So I got these 12-inch tortillas that I'm cutting down to a mouth-sized height, which I'm going to perch atop some aluminum foil craftwork, making sort of hills and valleys so I can form the tortillas into shells. Now first these guys need to dry out, so I'm placing them in a 225 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 30 to 45 minutes until they are dry and rigid. Once dry, they're ready to be deep fried to crispy completion. A 12 inch tortilla will obviously be a tight fit for a 12 inch pan, so into a roasting pan they go along with a few inches of corn oil heated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, frying 30 seconds per side for one to two minutes total until golden brown and crisp. And this is after all a YouTube show and I do after all need a thumbnail. So I got one full size tortilla, which I'm gonna make into a full size 12 inch taco shell. Last but not least, the toppings. I'm sauteing one pound of ground beef in two tablespoons of oil until it's lightly browned, setting it aside to drain and some paper towels and pouring off all but about two tablespoons of the fat, in which I'm gonna sweat half a chopped onion for about two minutes before adding a couple cloves of crushed garlic, along with a tablespoon each, taco seasoning, and ancho chili powder. Sauteing those together for about 30 seconds or until aromatic, adding one cup of tomato sauce and a quarter cup of chili sauce. Add the ground beef back to the mix and one cup of water. Simmer these guys together for about 45 minutes over medium-low heat until the flavors have melded, seasoned to taste with kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper. And there you have it, a very easy taco chili sauce. Last up, the 
cheese chunk dipping sauce, for which I'm making some good old fashioned Velveeta and Rotel from the canned queso, to which I'm gonna add some unmelted blocks of cheddar to make it a proper cheese chunk sauce. First up, the ridiculous one with my longest available hot dog, piled high with our concession stand toppings. This is the kind of reward you deserve for cleaning up a beach. Is it physically larger than the Belcher children's heads? Yes. Would they love that fact about it? Also yes. Should you griddle or steam your dog and not eat it straight off the smoker? Also yes. Otherwise the case gets rather chewy and you look something of a fool on camera. Let's try this with a properly griddled dog and our sort of convertible taco shell. And the result is somehow just as gross as the first iteration, but tastes much better. And that's the kind of improvement I've learned to become proud of. Thanks again to Geico for sponsoring today's episode and making this hot dog taco possible. Geico has been helping people save money on their car insurance for over 85 years. So if you'd like to see how much Geico could save you today, head to the link in the video description below.